looks like chaos, but there's always somebody behind the wheel. Hey there guys, this is Richard, your host, with another marvellous video. Who started the nuclear war? Okie dokie folks, the much-awaited Fallout series is here, and some would say it's better than the gaming experience. The Amazon Prime show is an adaptation of the massively popular Fallout games, which debuted in the late 90s and spawned an entire franchise of its own. The brand new series mirrors the game's whimsical and violent flavour and incorporates brilliant performances by Ella Purnell, Aaron Moten and Walter Goggins who are the three main characters, Lucy, Maximus and Cooper, respectively. In today's video, we'll break down the show's climactic events and attempt to sum up what it means for the future of the series. But before we delve into the storyline and explain the ending, let's talk a little about the setting. Like the games, the Fallout series is set in an alternate timeline in a retro-futuristic society and explores the themes of capitalism, world politics and global domination. The events of the series take place some 219 years after a nuclear holocaust called the Great War, wiping out most of America and its population. Only a fraction of the wealthy and the lucky manage to escape the aftermath by entering secure underground Fallout centers called vaults and living out their lives there. The series centers around a cluster of three vaults, 33, 32 and 31 whose ultimate purpose is to repopulate the Earth with healthy citizens once the radiation levels go down in the outside world. A number of those who got left outside turned into ruthless bounty hunters called the Raiders, who pose a threat to the vaults if ever a door to the surface is opened. While the vault dwellers are growing corn and living in an artificially projected environment, the world outside has turned into a wasteland, infested by zombie-like ghouls, mutated bloodthirsty creatures and cannibals who use rotten human teeth for bullets. The market smell of dog meat and iguana flesh with bottle caps being being used as currency in the absence of real money. In this post-apocalyptic world operates the Brotherhood of Steel with their arsenal of technologically advanced weaponry and robots who carry out clandestine missions. They operate with war technology to acquire more technology just to keep it to themselves. This wasteland world is turned upside down when a young woman from the vault steps out into the radiation-infected surface looking for a dad. Number 1. Here's a quick episode-wise lowdown on how the protagonists and the villains get to the action-packed finale. The debut episode, the longest of all eight, introduces the characters individually. First, we have the optimistic Lucy McLean, a Vault 33 resident whose wedding party is crashed by a team of raiders from the surface, led by the enigmatic Moldava. They kidnap her father, Hank McLean, the overseer of the vault, forcing Lucy to venture out of the vault for the first time in her life and get a taste of the wasteland. Then there's Maximus, an ambitious member of the revered Brotherhood of Steel, who aspires to be a Brotherhood Knight, a feat he achieves through treachery. However, he shares the same goal as the Brotherhood, to make the world better. Next up, we have the Ghoul, who indeed makes the most impactful entry on the show as a gunslinging lasso expert mutant who survived inside a coffin for decades and is very, very hard to kill. Number 2. Another important character is Siggy Wilzig, a scientist of the Enclave an organization that carries out unethical experiments. In the second episode, Siggy Wilzig escapes the Enclave with his canine companion with a tiny blue cylinder injected in his neck, which holds the key to saving the world. Interestingly, it's Wilzig's severed head that has more screen time on the show than the whole of him. Searching for her dad, Lucy bumps into Wilzig and is saved from human-devouring cockroaches by his dog. Meanwhile, Wilzig is being hunted by the Brotherhood and the Ghoul for a bounty. A bloody showdown at the center of a bizarre wasteland town brings together Lucy, Maximus, the Ghoul, and Wilzig. Lucy learns that Wilzig is headed to meet Moldava, who has her dad, and joins the scientist on his quest. Number 3. Midway through, however, Wilzig gives in to his injuries, and as his dying wish, asks Lucy to deliver his chopped-off head to Moldava. Meanwhile, the Ghoul gets a whiff of Lucy's location and tracks her down, only to find that Wilzig's head has been devoured by a monstrous creature called the Gulper. Maximus also begins tracking Wilzig's trails using his radiation meter, leading him to the Gulper. And a wrestling match with Maximus later, the Gulper is forced to gurgle out Wilzig's severed head. Number 4. In the fourth episode, Lucy is a prisoner of the lasso-wielding ghoul, who walks her across the harsh wasteland to give her a taste, quite literally, of what life is like for the surface dwellers, very graphically demonstrating the belief, sometimes fellas gotta eat a fella to survive. This is followed by a gory scene, in which Lucy chomps off the ghoul's finger and he slices up her index in return. Anyhow, the ghoul was keeping Lucy alive so that he could be exchanged for the vials of medicine that keep him from going feral. As Lucy was about to get her organs harvested by a strange machine called Snip Snip, her killer instincts kicked in and she escaped the situation using a drain cleaning liquid and looking like Furiosa from Mad Max. On her way out, Lucy handed the ghoul a bunch of vials to keep him from turning feral, reminding him of the golden rule of the vault dwellers. 
Treat everyone the way you like to be treated. Back at the vault, Lucy's brother Norm ventures into the neighboring Vault 32 and discovers that its inhabitants were killed long before the recent attack of the raiders, and also that the vault was opened from the outside, with the ID stamp revealed to be his mom's. Number 5. In the fifth episode, Norm accesses the history of the vaults and realizes that each and every overseer that was elected in the past has been from Vault 31, including his dad, Hank. Even the current overseer, Betty, who replaced Hank, is also originally from Vault 31. Back on the surface, Maximus has an altercation with his squire, who flees the scene with Wilzig's severed head and deactivates Maximus's knight armor, leaving him to roast alive inside. Saved by Lucy just in time, the duo struck a deal that Lucy would help him track down the head, and in exchange, Maximus would arrange for the Brotherhood Knights to help save her dad from Moldava. Lucy gets a reality check when they arrive at Shady Sands, the capital of the New California Republic. From a hoarding, Lucy learns that in the years after the nuclear war, the NCR thrived with a population of over 34,000 people. She's grown up knowing the Vault Dweller's purpose is to repopulate the Earth on Reclamation Day, but the demography of California renders that purpose useless. Afterward, Lucy and Maximus land up in a certain Vault Number 4 through a trap door which had new surprises in store for them. Number 6. The next episode mainly focuses on the ghoul's past identity. In the pre-war times, Cooper Howard was a Hollywood superstar who famously played a cowboy on screen and lived in a swanky California bungalow with his wife and daughter. Cooper's wife, Barb, was an executive of Vault Tech, a powerful company that introduced the concept of radiation-resistant vaults to the world in anticipation of a nuclear war. At his wife's request, Cooper signed up for vault -Tech's advertisements, unaware of the deadly truth behind the company's evil doings. Cooper's advert featured the aforementioned Vault Number 4, which at the time was being controlled by scientists with unlimited freedom to experiment. They could do whatever inside those vaults to secure a better future. Meanwhile, inside present-day Vault Number 4, Lucy and Maximus encounter a bunch of residents with creepy physical abnormalities, such as the Overseer has one central eye in between the brows, and others have random ears and noses popping out of their heads. This episode also reveals that Shady Sands served as the hub of political and economic power in the NCR till it was nuked in 2277. Lucy also discovers that the survivors of Shady Sands found refuge in Vault Number 4 and are worshippers of Moldava, the one who kidnapped her father. Lucy also ventures onto the Forbidden Department on Floor 12, only to discover countless mysterious containers with unidentified females inside, presumably held hostage as subjects for experiments. Number 7. In the next episode, Lucy learns that these are the people Vault Tech scientists experimented on before the war, and now they're simply kept preserved in a sleep-like state. Past footage reveals scientists hybridizing humans with radioactive-resistant species, resulting in monsters they couldn't control. And the Gulper is one example. As a punishment for being nosy, Lucy and Maximus are ousted from Vault Number 4 following which they track down Maximus' squire and obtain the severed head from him. With the Brotherhood approaching their location, Maximus lets Lucy flee with Wilzig's head so that he can hand it over to Moldava and free her dad from Moldava's clutches. For his part, Maximus plans to go back to the Brotherhood headquarters with a fake head and return to Moldava's den with more knights to aid Lucy. This second-to-last episode also continues Cooper's backstory. Before the war, when he was advertising for vault -Tec, Cooper met with the feisty Moldava once. She was an enigmatic scientist and a leader of a resistance group who warned Cooper that vault -Tec was not in favor of a peace treaty because a treaty meant no war, and no war means the vault -Tec vaults would go obsolete. Meanwhile, inside present-day Vault Number 33, Norm continues his investigations into the other vaults and lands up in Vault Number 31 to discover a shocking truth. Number 8. Now we come to the finale episode, which unravels many mysteries and horrifying truths that help connect the dots from two centuries ago. Another flashback into Cooper's past reveals that by planting a bug in his wife's arm device, Cooper learns that the government had outsourced vault -Tec to manage the future of America at a time when the world was dealing with a resource crisis, which would ultimately lead to a nuclear battle. Listening to a meeting of the vault -Tec executives, Cooper overhears that in case no nuclear war takes place in the future, vault -Tec wants to drop the bombs themselves so that the vaults don't go obsolete and they continue to make money. There are several vault -Tec shelters worldwide to be controlled by different executives, with Barb and her colleague Bud in charge of vaults 33, 32, and 31. To preserve humanity for centuries, till the surface world gets wiped clean by nuclear activity and radiation, Barb's work partner Bud came up with Project Bud's Buds. These are highly trained vault -Tec executives to be kept on life support devices for centuries inside vault number 31, who would then become the overseers of vaults 33 and 32. Meanwhile, these two pods would serve as the mating ground for genetically selected vault dwellers and the trained executives or buds, thus giving birth to highly intelligent humans who can be used as super managers within the vault's ecosystem. In present day, Norm learns this ugly truth upon venturing into vault number 31 and encountering Budaskins' brain, 
which is weirdly perched atop a Roomba. Meanwhile, Lucy reaches the Griffith Observatory, where Moldava has set up her new California Republic headquarters. In a strange enough setting, Lucy finds Moldava sharing a meal with a grotesque wheezing ghoul, while her dad is locked up in a cage. Handing over Wilzig's head, Lucy demands that her dad, Hank McLean, is freed, but she gets some story time in return. Moldava reveals Hank to be one of Bud's Bud executives, who's been on life support for decades and was awakened within the vault to breed intelligent beings such as Lucy and her brother Norm. Another flashback reveals that before the Great War, Hank served as Bob's vault tech assistant, even picking up her laundry was a huge fan of Cooper. Moldava tells Lucy that once Hank was reactivated within the vault system, he went on to marry Rose, who was quite an adventurous soul. After years of living within the vault, Rose suspected life may be outside those containers and ventured into the outside world. She landed up in Shady Sands sometime in the 23rd century, and Hank came looking for her. Witnessing life outside the vaults, Rose refused to return to the metal confinement, but Hank returned to the vaults, taking Lucy and Norm with him. In retaliation, Hank McLean later ordered the bombing of Shady Sands and replaced it with a giant crater. By nuking Shady Sands, Hank eradicated the only surface settlement that threatened the existence of the vaults. When Lucy asked what became of her mum, Moldava pointed at the one-armed hairless ghoul sitting at the table. Meanwhile, the tiny little vial that came out of Wilzig's head is actually a technology called Cold Fusion, a discovery which Moldava made centuries ago, but was seized by vault -Tec. Cold Fusion generates limitless energy. It's a power source that would end the centuries-old battle over resources. As Moldava activates the Cold Fusion, the headquarters are attacked by the Brotherhood and the Ghoul, but with separate agendas. The Ghoul has his eyes set on Hank McLean, who can lead him to his long-lost family. While the Brotherhood seeks the Cold Fusion, for unlimited power. Amidst the hullabaloo, Hank manages to don a knight's armor and take off into the sunset, prompting the ghoul to theorize that Hank answers to bigger powers, and that's where he's headed. The ghoul extended an offer to Lucy to join him on his quest to track down Hank and meet her makers. Before taking on this new mission, Lucy bids goodbye to a knocked out Maximus and puts an end to Rose's misery by shooting her in the head. As Maximus gains consciousness, a wounded Moldava returns to the room and activates the cold fusion which lights up the California city ruins in front of her eyes. As her dream comes true, Moldava succumbs to her injuries, holding hands with Rose, leaving Maximus with the haunting thought about what the Brotherhood would do with the power of infinite resources. Seeing Moldava dead, the remaining members of the Brotherhood assumes that Maximus killed the leader of their enemies and chanted, All hail, Knight Maximus. The show ends on a promising note, with the credit scene revealing that Hank McLean has arrived at a desolate, barricaded city, New Vegas. Ending Explained The Fallout series answers some often asked questions of the gaming franchise, such as who started the Great War, and what all experiments were carried out inside the vaults, and who was the vault boy with his signature thumbs up, and we have the answers right here for you. vault Tech started the Great War to control the future, but why? While the first episode showed California getting destroyed by nukes, the season finale revealed who dropped the bombs. It was vault Tech who made sure that there was a nuclear war and life becomes impossible on the radiation-infected surface. That way, their vault business would stay relevant for centuries. And centuries later, their well-preserved executives would come alive again to take the reins of what's left of America on the surface. vault Tech even got a whiff of a peace treaty and squashed every technology and company that could bring peace. What's worse is those who were born in the bunkers had no idea of vault Tech's murderous past and their future plans of global domination. The vault dwellers survived under the misconception that they'd save the human race one day by repopulating the surface, once radiation levels died down. What's the secret of Vaults 31, 32, and 33? Simply put, Vault 31 was the haven of loyal Vault Tech employees, who were put in cryogenic sleep for centuries so that they could be reactivated in the future to carry on with the company's evil plans of world supremacy. Vaults 32 and 33 simply served as breeding pools for the Vault Tech loyals from Vault 31. They'd mate with desirable partners to generate highly intelligent and genetically premium offspring, who would then carry on Vault Tech's legacy in the future. What you brought me? Is cold fusion. It's limitless energy. What was the artifact concealed in Wilzig's dead head? The mystery behind the little vial that scientist Wilzig was carrying was finally revealed in the season finale. It turned out to be the cold fusion technology, which can generate limitless power. And infinite power means no fight for resources, which means a peaceful world. But peace is not good for Vault Tech. So before launching the Great War, 
Boltec began buying companies and technologies that could threaten its plans of ruling the world, and that included the cold fusion technology they acquired and conveniently abandoned. Moldova finally activated the long-lost tech in the finale episode, which showed the extent of its power. The cold fusion technology brought back electricity in the entire desolate state of California within minutes, revealing how destructive the tech can be in the wrong hands. We were developing this kind of technology that's difficult to monetize. Cold fusion. Why Moldova hates Voltec and Hank McLean so much? Moldova invented the cold fusion technology before the nuclear war, and just before she could fine tune it, the company she was working for was acquired by Voltec, putting a stop to her inventions. Voltec stole her cold fusion tech only to shelve it so it couldn't be used for world peace. We guess that's reason enough to hate someone, right? And as for Hank McLean, that fellow blew up Shady Sands, the capital of the new California Republic, a city set up on the surface by Moldova and her raiders. Under Moldova's supervision, Shady Sands was the thriving human hub on the surface, which was reduced to rubbles by Hank. Why did Moldova kidnap Hank McLean but kept him alive? When Voltec acquired Moldova's cold fusion technology, they made the research work a proprietary product. Hence, the cold fusion energy contained in the vial that Lucy handed over to Moldova could only be set in motion by a Voltec employee, Hank McLean. He was kept alive so that Hank could activate the cold fusion with a secret code when the time arrived. After Moldova revealed the truth about Hank's past, Lucy coaxed him to feed the activating code into the system, and Hank obliged. How did Lucy lose her mum? Sometime before 2277, Lucy's mum identified water being siphoned off to the surface from the underground vaults. This little clue led her to discover Shady Sands, where she wanted to stay with her kids Lucy and Norm. Hank was so brainwashed by vault -Tec that he identified Shady Sands as threatening the company's plans. Shady Sands was a glaring example that human civilization was possible on the surface, which was detrimental to vault reputation. Thus, despite his wife being in Shady Sands, Hank brought the children back to the vaults and ordered the capital to be nuked, turning his wife into a creepy ghoul. Why the ghoul let Lucy's dad escape? The ghoul, aka Cooper, wanted Hank to lead him straight to the ultimate power that controls vault evil machinations. Cooper knows that vault subterranean functions are run by a top boss, who remains well hidden on the surface. By launching a tracker into Hank and letting him escape, Cooper only simplified his hunt for the vault Vulture. What's the dilemma of Knight Maximus? With Moldova dying and the Brotherhood winning the battle over the Raiders, the Brotherhood gains full access to the Cold Fusion technology. As Moldova said, the Cold Fusion energy has the potential to build a new home for every surface dweller, with access to clean water, fresh food, and medicines. With Maximus freshly branded as the Knight, it's up to him to either stop the Brotherhood's relentless pursuit of power through the new tech, or become the Brotherhood's second-in-command as promised by the Elder Cleric. future of the franchise. Interestingly, after fleeing Moldavis headquarters in the Brotherhood's stolen armor, Hank McLean lands in New Vegas, an iconic location of the gaming franchise. New Vegas is where the 2010 Fallout game is set, but the events occur in 2281, 15 years before the series is set. In the game, three powerful factions fight over an important region around New Vegas, with the New California Republic faction being one of them. With the series set in the future from the events of the New Vegas game, the second season will likely focus on a new storyline of what brought Hank McLean to the Ward City. If vault headquarters are in New Vegas, one can expect to see Cooper's wife Barb pulling the strings from the surface. If she indeed is the one in charge, then fans will perhaps get to know how she managed to remain alive on the surface for over two centuries. Tracking Hank all the way to New Vegas, Cooper may also reunite with his long-lost daughter in vault base of operations. As for Lucy, well, she appears determined to avenge her mom's tragic end. Tracking down Hank and confronting him is the only way to do it. Lucy's entire life has been a lie. Now she's resolute to seek revenge for the wrongs done by her father. Empowered by the truth, Lucy might also be motivated to free the vault dwellers from Vault 33 and 32 and reunite with her brother. The ending leaves Maximus in a tricky situation. He just learned that Lucy's father is the one who rendered him homeless as a kid by nuking Shady Sands, and that fire of vengeance can potentially corrupt his soul, especially when the Brotherhood now has access to infinite power through the cold fusion technology. However, one thing is for sure that both Maximus and Lucy will try to make it back to each other despite their different goals. While this season of Fallout is relatively low on monsters, the second one may introduce one of the deadliest creatures of the franchise, the Deathclaw. We say this because in the last episode, an armored Hank can be seen walking past the skull of a Deathclaw in New Vegas. These genetically engineered monsters were created by the military to replace humans in search and destroy missions. In Fallout's lore, they escaped the confinements after the Great War and became apex predators in the post-war ecosystem.
how the Fallout series connects to the games. While the series comes with an original story, it not only incorporates several signature elements of the game, but also draws from the franchise's narrative, such as the plot point of the cryogenic machines, in which the loyal vault -Tec executives remained asleep, is inspired by Fallout 4, in which the game's protagonist remained frozen as part of the experiments carried out in Vault Number 111. Lucy's hunt for her father might also remind fans of the beginning of Fallout 3. Furthermore, the introduction of New Vegas, a city constructed in the ruins of Las Vegas, has been the setting of one of the most loved Fallout games. Interestingly enough, the superstar turned ghoul Cooper points out how an adventurer in the wasteland gets sidetracked by bullshit every goddamn time, hinting at the Fallout franchise's many side quests that players can choose to busy themselves with. The series also assigns a fully etched out story behind Vault Boy the vault tech mascot who frequently appears in the games. In the series, showbiz star Cooper Howard poses with a thumbs up for a vault tech advertisement, which eventually becomes the animated Vault Boy mascot as seen throughout the series and in the games before. Marvelous verdict. More than being just a slight screen adaptation of the video game, the Fallout series is a blood-splattered adventure-filled expansion of the franchise. Even though the ghoul, with his cowboy mannerism, steals the show, the true villain of the series is the capitalist predator vault tech which destroyed the world to control it. Lucy's transformation from being a naive daddy's girl to one that shoots her mother in the face is pretty savage, and proves that it takes more than just guns and ammo to survive a post-apocalyptic wasteland. With such a cliffhanging Season 1 ending, Season 2 will have a lot of loose ends to tie up. We already can't wait for that to happen. Has the Fallout series lived up to your expectations? Well, please share with us in the comments below. And if you liked our explanation, please give us a shout-out and stay tuned for more Fallout-related content.